Hey everyone, today we're going to be checking if mass is always conserved. I have here some steel wool. Now steel wool is pretty cool because if you light it on fire, it actually burns. But let's see what happens when we put the steel wool on a scale like this. Okay, let's light it on fire and watch it burn. Now initially the weight went down, which is what you'd kind of expect when you're burning something. The reason the steel wool initially lost weight is because it actually created an upward force with the hot air, and so it was kind of lifting up the plate, and so it fictionally made it weigh a little bit less. But watch what happens after a little bit. The weight goes up. And finally, at the end of it all, the weight has increased. So this entire bulk here actually has more mass now. So how did the mass increase? Well, the mass increased because it took oxygen from the air to mix with the iron in the steel wool and it made an iron oxide. So there's more mass on the steel wool now, so it weighs more. So that means when things rust, they actually get heavier, not lighter. But what about with regular paper? Well, let's try it with regular paper and see what happens. In this case, you can see that the weight actually decreased. That's because after the carbon in the paper reacted with the oxygen, it didn't stick to it, but it turned into carbon dioxide and the hydrogens on the molecules turned into water. And so the CO2 and water left the system, and so we were just left with this carbon ash and not a lot of the carbons and hydrogens that we had to start with, so it weighed less. But the question is, what happens if we're to seal the entire system and then burn it? Would it weigh less then? I'm going to zero it here so that it says zero so we can see the change in weight more clearly. So I'll put the steel wool in here. And you can see that it doesn't weigh more now. And so it pulled oxygen from the volume that was already contained on the scale there and it applied it to the iron. So it didn't decrease the weight overall. Now technically what's happening here is because it actually creates a small vacuum in the bottle. You can hear the pop of the can as it sucks in the lid. Now let's try it with our piece of paper here. So to light it on fire in the closed bottle, I'm going to put a little black spot on it and then shine my high powered laser and it should light it on fire. But I'm going to put oxygen in there with it so it will actually burn fully. If I don't do that, it just kind of singes the edges and doesn't really burn. So when we close it up, no gas escapes, and so it stays the exact same weight. If you're a little bit confused how we're able to weigh the gases on the scale, because normally you can't weigh a gas, notice that when I was using the steel wool, the steel wool in the closed system sucked some of the oxygen out of the container and applied it to the steel wool, and so the container actually had a little bit of vacuum in it. And because it had a little bit of vacuum in it, it had more buoyancy from the air around it, so that made it lighter, but also the steel wool got heavier the same amount, so it stayed the same weight. And for the paper example, it actually increased the pressure in the bottle, and the increased pressure in the bottle actually weighs more than something at regular pressure. So in that case, the air inside the bottle weighed more, and the paper weighed less, but overall the whole system weighed the same. So overall, mass is always conserved. No matter what you do, you can't change the amount of mass that is present. And this was always thought to be true until Albert Einstein came along. Now you might recognize this equation, E equals mc squared. But when Einstein first wrote the version of this equation, it actually wasn't written this way. It was actually written as delta m equals delta e over c squared. And what that means is the change in mass equals change in energy over the speed of light squared. So actually mass isn't always conserved. What is conserved is the relationship between mass and energy. If you destroy mass, that means you create energy. If you destroy energy, you create mass. So that means if you input energy into a system, it actually contains more mass. And if you lose energy from a system, it actually contains less mass. 
For example, when a uranium atom decays, if you were to take those pieces of uranium atom and weigh them and see how much mass they have, you'd see that they actually have a little bit less mass than they did when they were just closer together. Now it took a long time for scientists to notice this small change because it takes a lot of energy to create a little bit of mass or it takes a little bit of mass to create a lot of energy. In fact, if you wonder how much mass it would take to run everything you need for your entire life and use all the energy you need for the rest of your life, it would only take about this much mass. And speaking of energy, I'd like to thank the sponsor for this video, EcoFlow. EcoFlow makes my favorite electric power station. EcoFlow power stations are one of the world's fastest charging electric generators on the market. You can plug them into any standard AC power source, or you can even charge them really fast with solar panels as well. They also have a very high output. You can plug in many high power devices at the same time with no problem. And if you need even more power, you can turn on the X Boost. It even comes with the EcoFlow app, so you can monitor charge levels, usage data, and more. I've had electric power stations before, but this is by far my favorite. It can put out so much power at one time, and also my favorite thing is how fast it charges. Look at this, over a thousand watts charging right now. So if you're in the market for an EcoFlow product, EcoFlow is running a huge promo for the Prime Day as we speak. Some products are up to $900 or minus 48% off. Check out the links in the description below to find out more about EcoFlow's amazing line of products and details on their Prime Day promo. And thanks again for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. And check out theactionlab.com for Action Lab experiment boxes and cool paintings that we have that incorporate Musso Black, the world's blackest paint. And thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.